Hola a todos, ¿cómo estáis? Bueno, bienvenidos a nuestro canal de Cambly en YouTube. Eh, mi nombre es Tiago, ¿vale? Aquí bueno, pues siempre hacemos todas las semanas una, una live en directo aquí en nuestro canal. Hoy estamos haciendo aquí en el medio de la, en el medio de la semana, estamos tal vez haciendo unos test, no sé, porque he visto que mucha gente está pidiendo para que cambiáis el día de la semana, que antes estaban haciendo el sábado y por ahora que hay mucha gente queriendo que, que, bueno, para hacer durante la semana. Pues vamos a hacerlo. Y una vez más, bienvenidos. Me llamo Tiago. Este es el canal de Cambly en, en YouTube. ¿Y qué es Cambly? Para los que vosotros que estáis ahí no, no conocen todavía. Cambly es una plataforma que pone en, tu, en contacto con tutores nativos de inglés para que aprendas inglés con los mejores tutores nativos de, de países de habla inglesa. Y hoy vamos a hablar de un tema, como siempre hacemos, Temas diversos, hablamos un poco sobre todo. Y hoy vamos a hacer una continuación a una live que hicimos a, a hace 12, dos semanas, creo. Y estuvimos hablando sobre los, los deportes, los, los deportes más practicados en, en Estados Unidos. Y hoy vamos a continuar hablando sobre ellos, pero más en el vocabulario que se dice en estos, en estos deportes, principalmente en los tres más importantes deportes de Estados Unidos y vamos con esto a hablar un poco más sobre ello, ¿vale? Si tenéis preguntas podéis poner aquí al lado en, en los comentarios cualquier cosa sobre deportes y, y cualquier duda que tengáis, vamos a hablar sobre esto y para los que todavía no conocen a Cambly, estamos aquí con un código de promoción aquí abajo, ¿vale? que os da una clase totalmente gratis para empezar. Y si queréis hacer una clase con nuestro tutor de hoy, que es Gui, que muchos de vosotros ya conocéis, eh, pues aquí abajo también en la descripción está el enlace de su perfil en Cambly, ¿vale? Entonces, esto será todo en inglés, vamos a cambiar en inglés ahora y podéis poner tus, tus dudas y comentarios aquí al lado, ¿vale? So, let's go to English, let's speak English, and... Um, So how are you, Guy? How are you, how are you doing? Everything good? Hi, Thiago. Hi, everyone at home watching us. Uh, yeah, everything's good. Nice, nice. Not huh? much, not much new since last time. Um, <laughs> yeah, everything's good. How about you? I'm glad. I'm glad. Everything's good here as well. Summer is here, so I'm glad that the weather is pretty nice here in Madrid. Nice. So. Let's let's go uh, for everybody. Most of the people already know you and know that you we were already um, doing some live sessions. But if we have some new people here watching us today, so can you present yourself for for these people and say a little bit about you? Sure. Yeah, my name is Guy Moraes. I'm a tutor here on Cambly. I'm also a fine artist and a tattoo artist. I was born in Brazil, but I lived in Miami, Florida for most of my life. And uh, yeah, I think that's a very short summary. <laughs> and here we are. Yeah, and I love teaching English. I love talking about various topics. So if you're looking to improve your English, your conversation, and you would like to maybe speak about various topics from politics to science to something in the art world maybe you're an artist yourself and you would like to expand your vocabulary to be able to talk about your artwork or maybe just have a conversation about anything artistic i am the guy to go to so please schedule a, cl uh, a class with me and it'd be an honor to meet you and guide you through the way that's not that's a very good summary you, you sold yourself pretty well <laughs> thank you <laughs> that's nice And for let me before we start, if anyone who already, I mean, some of the people already knew and watched us from the last time, but some of those were like new here, and they probably are asking what what this guy did with his hair. Can you explain again what what is with your hair and, and why you did it? Because I thought it was amazing. So, can you explain a little <laughs> bit about it? Yeah, sure. Well. Being an artist, I am already very um, for doing random weird things, um, <laughs> from fashion to anything. But the, the hairstyle, um, 
was influenced by Dennis Rodman, who was a very famous basketball player in the 90s. He played for the Chicago Bulls alongside with um, Michael Jordan, Scottie Pippen. He played in Detroit before that. He was a very strong defense player, a crucial part of the team when they won um, all those championships. And long story short, Scottie Pippen played for the Bulls as well. His number was 33, and he was hurt for almost the whole year. He was almost the whole season out. So when he came back, his first game back, Dennis Rodman painted his hair just like this, which is supposed to be 33s, but it was done in a very crude way. So it looks like E's or it looks like anything but threes. But that's what it was supposed to be, 33s and, you know, just sort of a support to Scottie Pippen on his first game back. And Dennis Rodman, he was a very out-of-the-box player. He always did crazy things with his hair. He had piercings and, you know, he got covered in tattoos way before tattoos were something popular among sports um, and athletes and celebrities. So he was like way ahead of time. So, you know, a, a great inspiration for me being an artist and a tattoo artist and a fan of basketball. So it was just a little nod to Dennis Rodman. All right, all right, that's good. Yeah, and everybody who is yeah. watching us today, and if you didn't, in Netflix we have a they put it a, a documentary series that is extremely like well produced and they have an amazing story about this Chicago Bulls story and Michael Jordan during the the like the era of I mean the goat right? It's like the the Michael Jordan was the goat from and they won everything and it's a very amazing documentary so if you guys wanted to imagine a little bit about this basketball world and how it is amazing in the sports and how dedicated those athletes were and you can watch this documentary on, on netflix it called um, the last dance the last dance right it's the last dance yeah i think in english it's the last dance in brazil i think they uh, released it with the last shot so uh -huh. it might change depending on where you are. But, uh -huh. you know, if you type in Michael Jordan, it will show up for sure. <laughs> yeah, yeah, for sure. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Here, here in Spain, I think, if I'm not wrong, it, it's The Last Dance. So yeah. Cool. Nice. They kept the original title. Yeah. Because a lot of times, you know, like foreign countries translate titles and stuff. They, if mm -hmm. it doesn't sound or it doesn't rhyme good, then they would just change it to something else. Uh -huh. But that's cool, yeah. So the documentary shows that and... It shows how the NBA was popularized in the whole world, you know, because of the Michael Jordan phenomena and mm -hmm. also how athletes started becoming celebrities and started getting signed with deals with like shoes and, you know, other products. And it kind of took athletes from just being very well known in the sports into being like global stars. Mm -hmm. So it goes beyond basketball and shows the dream team in the Olympics. There's like so many different sides to the documentary. Yeah. So yeah, it's cool. Definitely worth checking out. Yeah, definitely, definitely. It's amazing. So definitely you should. I saw that as some people already put it here. Luisito, thanks for, for putting the last dance. So where are you from, Luisito? It's just for us to, to know if your country is the, it, it calls the last dance as well. So put it here in the comments for us to know. And well, since we're we're talking about basketball, and um, and it's your favorite sport, since you you, you told us before, you, you're really a big fan of basketball. Um, yeah, we, we can maybe start with this kind of vocabulary into the basketball. And I think we have a lot of things to to say into the basketball world. And I'm not a super like I get it. I like to watch, but I'm not so into what they are doing and what i mean the vocabulary into that so it will be nice to hear right. from you a few things and a few words that they they actually use just for for the basketball world so maybe we can start from that you, you, what, what do you what do you want to say about the basketball world in general yeah so the basketball world is very interesting it's a very dynamic sport um it's one of those sports that have very high score. So it's like back and forth action. Um, you know, you, if you watch like soccer or hockey, you know, the score might be 
or it might be three zero or like three threes, like a, a lot of goals, right? Like basketball, it goes up to like hundred, you know, to each team. So sometimes that can be very action packed, and then sometimes I also think it gets kind of repetitive, you know, like each point doesn't really. It's not something that special because it happens so often. But then as it starts getting towards the end of the game and it gets like a tighter like competition and each shot starts mattering more, right? Like each shot he can take the lead and the time is running down and then it starts getting like, I don't know, more adrenaline. Uh-huh. But yeah, it's a very cool sport. Um, so yeah. I have here some words. Yeah, yeah. As, as, you, as, you, as you were saying, as you were saying, you, you were... You just put it in, in a very specific way. What I think, well, I, I suppose it's one thing, but let's say you, you say that every shot it, it gets more intense. What what is what's the shot? Is is where when they throw the ball? Is that is that? Yeah. So a shot is when you throw. Usually the ball, you know, in hockey, it could be the puck. They call it something else. But it's when you, you throw the object of play, let's say in basketball, it's the ball, right? And you're shooting it towards a goal, towards a target, to score a point. So you will see that in some different sports, they will use different terms for a shot or a throw, or in baseball, a pitch. And I'll get more into why they're called different things. But usually in the sports that they use shooting or a shot, is because they are throwing it at a target in which they will score a point if they hit it, right? Mm-hmm. So in basketball, it's the basketball hoop, right? So you're, you're shooting the ball towards that very specific target to score a point. Mm-hmm. So that's a shot. Yeah. Uh, then you have a pass. A pass is when you throw the ball, but instead of throwing it at the target to score a point, you're throwing it to another teammate. You know, maybe to create a play, maybe they're in a better position, or you're very well guarded. So that's a pass, right? You're throwing the ball to a teammate, to oh. another player on your team. Ah, oh, okay. It's, it's what what the what they did in, in the last dance. They did what they call the the triangle thing, and, and is that yeah. where you pass the ball to the other guy? It's like that, right? Yeah, so they have all these creative plays, like in all the sports. Uh, so basically, what I understood from the triangle was a way to keep moving the ball, passing to different teammates in a triangle formation until eventually one of your team players is open. Open means that you don't have uh, an opponent player guarding you. Mm-hmm. And guarding, <laughs> we can just keep <laughs> explaining all the words. Uh, That's good. That's yeah, good. So, yeah, to guard is basically to to have a defensive posture, right? So you're defending the opposing player, the opposing team, who has control of the ball or the puck or the ob- object of play. So you're guarding them. You're taking a defensive stance, and you're usually staying up close as to limit their actions, right? To try to stop them from making a play whether it's a pass or a shot, right, or to dribble. Mm -hmm. So that is to guard. So the triangle was basically a way to pass the ball in triangle formats, and that way you're shifting the defending players around the ball until eventually you have an open player who can take a clean shot, right, without some other player guarding them. So that Mm -hmm. was very interesting, and there are... I think the triangle is used in a lot of different other games too, just because of the way it's shaped. Uh-huh. It creates diagonals instead of like forward, you know, straight line passes. So it's like a very dynamic way of playing and moving the ball around. So they play triangles in soccer. I know in hockey they have triangle formations. I think uh-huh. it's pretty common nowadays in sports. It's a very dynamic style of play. Ah, uh, okay. So let, let, if I'm... If I would like to put it in, the, for example, because here in Spain, the soccer, it's super strong. And, and I know in most of the Latin American countries as well. And uh, mm-hmm. if I would like to put it, like the, to guard, okay, as you explained, if I would like, if I try to put it in, on an example, would be something like, um, 
uh, Sergio Ramos from from Real Madrid. He he's guarding Messi, right? So he cannot sure, yeah. shoot the ball. Is is that? Yeah, exactly. And guarding, um, you could be guarding someone who is controlling the ball. So let's say Messi has possession of the ball and he's trying to dribble his way towards the goal to get a good shot. So you could be guarding him actively, right? You're trying to take the ball away from him or just stop him from making the play. And you could also be guarding a player who doesn't have the ball. So basically what in that instance, you're just keeping track of them. So if they do get the ball, then you are close enough to where you can try to actively stop them, right? You're not giving them much room to roam around and, and to create space for their team to make plays. So guarding is both, right? You're always guarding a player usually. Um, usually the team who doesn't have possession is guarding, right? One mm -hmm. person might be guarding the guy who has the ball, and all the other players, they are probably defending, either guarding a player Or sometimes they have defense by zones, so you're not specifically guarding a player, but you're kind of guarding that zone that you're in. So if any passes or any balls come around that area or any player, you pick them up. So it's kind of complex, you know, there's these yeah. two different types of guarding, but it's a defensive stance, right? So you're on the defense. You're trying to stop the other team from making play, and you're trying to steal the ball back so then you can be attacking. Uh -huh. That's... That's the guard. Yeah. Ah, okay. So, so in the context in the context of basketball, I, I think I would I feel sorry for the guards who are trying to to guard Michael Jordan. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Because the guy... and then it, double teams. So double teams is when you have two players that guard one because that one player, when he's on the offense, he's so deadly, right? He's such a big threat. He's such a good attacking player that maybe one defensive player can't guard him by himself. So then you will have another player come guard him as well. So it's a two-on-one, but they call that a double team. And what happens is if two players are guarding one, then that means one player in the offense team is open, right? Mm -hmm. So it creates like this imbalance. So yeah, it's... That they could have even triple team. That's if three players team up on one, you know. Wow. Uh, yeah. So then the plan is that although you have other players who are open, you have three players just completely blocking off any possibility. So he couldn't get the ball to an open player. He can't make a pass. He's just completely swamped, right? Mm -hmm. But sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. But it's not as, as common as a double team. A double team is very common, you know. Mm -hmm. You double team a very good player and you leave a player who maybe is not as strong open. So you're forcing the attacking team to give the ball to a player who is not as strong on the offense, right? So he has a higher chance of missing a shot, let's say, mm -hmm. right? So if you're playing against Michael Jordan, you would much rather double team Michael Jordan so he can make shots because he makes almost all of his shots. You'd rather double team him and maybe leave another player open who is not as good as Michael Jordan and let him try to make a shot because he has a higher chance of missing that shot. So that's like the, the idea, you know. Uh -huh. There's this whole strategy yeah. behind, right? Something that's much <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Wow. And that happens in soccer too, right? Like you have, yeah. if Messi is very close or like Any other player, you know, like Higuain or any very good offense player, he's very near, like, the, the pitch or the, the area, then maybe it's a better idea to double-team him because he's such a, a strong finisher. Although you're going to leave another player in the offense open, it's better to just try to stop, like, a very good player, you know. Yeah. So sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't, but it's a risk you have to take. Definitely, definitely. So let, let, let me just say, um, I saw that Luisito, the, the guy who, who just answered us first there, he's from the Dominican Republic. So cool. very nice to have you here and a very big hug for everybody from the Dominican Republic. And um, 
Luis, he said that in Spanish is the El Ultimo Baile. Well, I didn't know about it. I think what, cool. what I saw here in, in, um, in Madrid, when I put it on Netflix, I think it was on, in The Last Dance. I, I would just check it out later. And um, the, the, let's say that there is one question here that is very interesting. And um, it's from sure. Ronald. And Ronald, he's asking if you know which is the most followed basketball team in the U.S. Mm. Today? Yeah. Do you know? I, I would guess it would be or like our Chicago Bulls or uh, the Lakers or the Golden State Warriors. I would be in the, probably those three. I don't know. Yeah. I would guess the Lakers. Yeah. Because the Lakers got had the, like the Kobe Bryant, it's like the, in this era, like this last era. Yeah, they had like yeah. Magic Johnson before that. Like the history is so large and yeah. so like victorious for the Lakers. You know, it goes way back before I was born. You know. Yeah. So that plays a big part in it. Like today. Yeah, like the team who is um, maybe for the last five years, the top team, tends to get a lot of fans. Fans that maybe always enjoy the sport, but they're not really born into a team. So they're not like that faithful to the team. They already, you know, from their city or something. So they kind of just root for a team who's doing really well. Uh -huh. So a team who's been doing really well for the last five years tends to get a lot of new fans these type of fans yeah but the history of a team kind of creates a very solid fan base that are people who are born into a family into a city that roots for that team and they won't change no matter what you know so i think um for that reason i know for a fact that like the lakers probably has a huge fan base yeah. and because it, it's such like uh, yeah it was so televised also for a long time and kobe bryant and You know, had all these players who made it like very special, and then other teams like the Boston Celtics are probably also very famous. Yeah, well, yes, for sure. Yeah, well, if yeah. if I had to put it, I would, I would put it in those in in this maybe in this section. I put it like the Los Angeles Lakers in the first one, and uh, probably now the Golden State Warriors and the Chicago Bulls. I would put it like that. I don't know if it will be. Because the Golden State Warriors, they had, they had like now the Stephen Curry and all those guys. Yeah. Like the LeBron. That's for Le sure. The... LeBron is in the Gold, Gold, Golden State, right? No, LeBron is in the Lakers now. Ah, yeah. Oh, yeah. For sure. It's for sure as Lakers in the first place. <laughs> I think I would say Lakers first, Chicago Bulls. I don't know. In America, right? Not in the world. If it was in the world, Chicago Bulls is probably up there. Because of the history since Michael Jordan, it just became such of like a strong name. Everyone knows Chicago Bulls, even if you don't watch basketball. If you are really into basketball and you've been watching it for the last few years, then probably Golden State, right? Mm -hmm. But within America, I would say, yeah, maybe today the Lakers, maybe Golden State, and then the Celtics. I don't know why. I think the Celtics also have a very rich history. Um, a lot of championships, a lot of finals, a lot of great players have come through there. It's just a very traditional basketball team, you know. Uh -huh. And I think that carries a lot of weight, even though they haven't won many uh, championships in the last years. Okay. I think that tradition and history still is very strong. So I would guess the Celtics in there, and then maybe the Bulls. Interesting, yeah. Who knows? I could be way off. <laughs> we see, don't tell us, man. You, you asked the question. You have now. You have to let us know. Yeah, Ronald. If you if you are just watching us here, like discussing that, uh, just make sure to to put your opinions here as well. Let, let me know what you think about what is the most followed team in the U.S. So let's see. And. Um, <laughs> Well, there's there's another question that I think it's pretty interesting, and I actually don't have any idea actually. And Pere, he's asking if like the NBA basketball team locals have to wear a white outfit. Do you know something from that? The locals, 
lo- yeah, they put it, the NBA basketball team, locals, have to wear a white outfit. Not sure. Yeah, well, I, I really don't know as well. I've never heard something related to that. Yeah, I know that the, the teams have a white jersey. And they have all these special edition jerseys that come out, like the white out, the black out, and it changes all the time. So I'm not I'm not a specialist on that. Uh-huh. So I don't know. I don't know if that's a rule. I don't know exactly oh, okay. who he's referring to, if it's the players or the staff or the fans. Yeah, so well better just make sure to to let us know what actually it would be one us to to answer because I, I don't get that much. And um, let me before we continue, I, I would like to to say one more here that I think it's interesting as well. I saw something some guys asking um, questions are, are related to baseball. We are going to into baseball in a few minutes. And, um, sure. But Carolina, she's asking something very. Interesting, and she said, "Like, what sports do you think can be considered a part of the culture of the U.S.?" I think those three, right? Those big three or four, with including hockey, depending of the. Of the yeah, region. so U.S. is like a continent almost, right? It's such a massive country, and there's a lot of faces to it. But I would say something that is unanimous in all of the U.S. are the top three, for sure. Mm-hmm. Um, I think a lot of other sports are, are popular, like hockey, you know, um, golf. Golf is very big, NASCAR. But I think these are, like, more famous in, in some areas, in some states, you know, and maybe it's not as national as I would say basketball, football, and baseball. I think those are like the three American sports. Although I don't know if they were all created in America. Probably none of them. Maybe American football. Mm -hmm. Um, But I don't know. I don't know too much about the history. But I would say those are like in yeah, they're super part of American culture. Mm -hmm. Right? Okay. And they have some other crazy, like, I don't even know if you can call them sports, like Derby. And I don't know, they have, like, a lot of different things that are sort of associated with American culture. Like golf, I think, I associate very much golf with American culture, you know, like golf courses and, like, the big houses and neighborhoods and these guys, you know, wearing their golf attire to play. Um, NASCAR is very much American as well. But, Mm -hmm. like, nationally, the top three, yeah, basketball, football, and baseball. Uh huh. All right, all right. Yeah, I would guess that as well. Like those, the three, the pillar of the, the sports. And uh, so, yeah. what, what, what do, you, what do you have more in terms of? The, do you want to share other interesting vocabulary uh, related to the basketball in general? What do, you, what do you think it's interesting for us to know as well? Yeah. So I think I focused. I started for this. Um, video today i started focusing on just like general terms of play so let's say one of our viewers is going to america and he is going to go outside to a park to see if he can you know find some people to play some sports with right maybe to the basketball court and there's some people playing what kind of terms is he going to hear that might help him understand what's going on so he can you know be a better part of the, of the game, right? Or maybe someone who's starting to watch on TV and they want to practice their English, so they're watching it in American channel or with, you know, like the, the American commentators, some things that they can understand that are like very basic to the game, such as passing, shooting, dribbling, right? To dribble is to move along Um, with the ball, right, to keep it in movement and keep it in your possession. And it could also be to dribble another player would be to kind of move with the ball or the puck, if it's hockey, Mm -hmm. past a guarding player, past a defending player, right? You dribble around them. Mm -hmm. So that's what I started out with. Eventually, I got into like some other 
curious terms, especially when you get into baseball, because baseball has such a long history, and it's such a different game. It has a lot of like mythology to it, and there's a lot of crazy words that people use for different plays, mm -hmm. and there's like dispute of where these terms came from, you know. So there's like a lot of like mystery behind the sport, which I thought was very interesting, and I think that. That could be a whole other topic of discussion, but I will get into okay. some curious ones. Okay. And then there could be also sports terms that have become idioms and are used a lot in regular day talk. I think that could be a whole other topic of discussion, you know, like, <laughs> um, they, yeah, like things people use at work or that you were used speaking with your friends that kind of derived from sports terms. Right, like the ball is in your court, right? I could okay. say that because now it's your turn to do something. Okay. And that is obviously coming from sports, right? The ball is in your court, so that means that you have possession. It's your turn to make a play. Mm -hmm. So, you know, there's like all these interesting sports terms that now we use as like idioms and everyday like um, figurative speech, which is also very interesting. But for this class, I was looking more into like these terms that could help someone understand the game better, or if they are ever in America, they want to go to the park, play some, some games, it will help them figure out what's going on, you know? Uh -huh. That's but dribble was a it's, a, it's a pretty simple one. Shoot, pass, uh -huh. dribble, guard. I think these are like the basics to play basketball, you know? People are going to say, hey, pass the ball, shoot, or hey, guard that man, you know? Uh, uh -huh. Play D. Play D um, it comes from play defense. That means that, you know, if you're on the team that's defending and someone screams to you, hey, Tiago, play D, that means, you know, like step up your defense, you know, oh. like guard them harder, you know. Uh -huh. Yeah, so play D. <laughs> There's like a lot of slang, too, that comes from just playing uh -huh. at parks. You know, these are not technical terms used by commentators. These are more like slang that people use playing pickup games. Uh -huh. The daily, there's just the so daily much daily. to cover we can't cover everything yeah, yeah there's a lot <laughs> well i can imagine that especially yeah as, so as, it's fun. as you said before it's the basketball it's probably as you as you said it's the most like most played sports and it's the people who it's the the sports for for everybody right because it's easy to play yeah with, so. for sure so yeah, in America, okay. there's such great infrastructure behind sports in general. So mm -hmm. whether you play for your school team or you play in a, a small league in your neighborhood, there's always a lot of um, options and opportunities to play sports in a team. Mm -hmm. So in that sense, you can always find like a little baseball league. You can play baseball for school. So kids do have opportunities to play these games. But as far as just going out in the street and playing with some friends, then basketball is for sure like the most popular because it's so simple. Uh -huh. There are like basketball hoops in every park. A lot of kids and families will have a basketball hoop on their driveway in front of their house. Mm -hmm. And all you need is a basketball, you know, and then all the kids from the neighborhood would just gather up and, and just play games of basketball and everyone can play. You know, there's no really assigned positions like in baseball. Uh -huh. It's kind of like, hey, we're all attacking and we're all defending. So it's just very simple, you know, to have like fun games. So I would say basketball is the one game that is played the most casually. Mm -hmm. But I think American football, like we talked about last class, is probably the one that is watched the most professionally. Yeah. Right. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. And uh, well, so that's since we we're receiving a lot of questions related to to baseball. So maybe we can when we can switch and go to the baseball and see what what actually we have into the baseball. What do you think about? Yeah. So some disclaimers. I never played much baseball. <laughs> it was never my cup of tea. Although I think it's very interesting sport. It has a lot of tradition. I think that pitching which is the person who is throwing the ball, and we'll get more into the terms in a little bit, and batting, which is the person who's trying to hit the ball. I think just that combination in itself is super fun. You know, if anyone has ever had a chance just to play some, some pitching and batting, you know, uh -huh. like the feeling of you 
cracking the ball and just sending it far is just so fulfilling. So there's like some mechanisms to baseball that I think are super interesting. But, you know, I was born in Brazil and I moved to America very young. So I was very much a super fan of soccer, of course. Uh-huh. And to me, baseball just felt very foreign. It, it was something that I didn't understand that much. So I didn't have that much interest for it. And the other aspect is, I think just to play a game of baseball in the neighborhood with my friends, it was kind of, it was more difficult than just to get a soccer ball or a basketball, like I was saying. You know, you need gloves and you need a very big field. Yeah. And um, I was like, no one was really that good. So it didn't really make a lot of play, you know, so I never got that into it. And then to watch it, for my opinion, my personal opinion, it's a very long game. And I didn't understand much of it. I didn't understand the, the rules. So I never got that into it until later. But I was doing research for this class and just the history behind it and all these different terms, things that I wasn't even aware of, kind of made me want to go back and watch some games. So I think tonight I'm going to look up like some <laughs> games and try to understand it better. Because now, right, like now that I'm older and I'm not a kid playing outside every day we start taking a different look into sports we're looking more into strategy we're looking more into like dynamics Mm -hmm. and it kind of sparked an interest in me i'm not gonna lie so i think i'm gonna look a lot more into baseball (laughs) yeah definitely there might be a lot of gold in there but um i mean so that's my disclaimer i'm not an expert (laughs) i'll give it my best (laughs) <laughs> all right, all right. That, that's good i mean i, I never I, I already watched some some games i never been in a huge stadium but i, I went to watch some universities um, games while i was living in california and uh cool. it, it, it it is fun to watch it is it is sometimes it takes too long but it, the the atmosphere in general like it went even when the, the game is quite like sm- slow and like there's nothing too much happening, like the, the atmosphere in general is pretty interesting. And um, right. there's a there's a one guy that the guy is from Dominican Republic, the Luisito. He's he asked us something very that's actually very interesting because he he asked, "What do you think about the Dominican baseball players in the in the major league baseball?" And he actually, they have a lot of Dominican and some Cubans yeah. as well, right? It's, it is amazing how well those guys play. Right. And uh, I don't know. If yeah, it, I think. I don't know if it's a, it's a something that is huge. So, Lucid, if you, if you can ask us here and give us more info about it. it baseball is huge when, in Dominican Republic when you, you were growing up. It's the sport everybody's playing. Because it, it is true, have like amazing players from the Dominican Republic. That's true. Yeah. So please, Luisito, give us a little more insight and info, like Tiago said. Because I could be wrong, but I, I think in Dominican Republic, it's a huge sport. Maybe the main sport. I could be wrong. And I know in America, it's also very big. I know in Puerto Rico, it's huge as well. I think in Cuba, they play it a lot. And I know in Japan, they have a very strong baseball league as well so it's not just an american sport for sure Mm -hmm. i don't think it's as global as like soccer or basketball but yeah yeah, i think there are a lot of strong players coming out of dominican republic and it's probably their genes man they're probably just very athletic people you know Mm -hmm. Um, fast strong crack the ball good Mm -hmm. so yeah i don't know too much about it because i don't watch it that much Uh uh-huh but if he could give us some insight and tell us some like big time players for us to do some research, that would be great. Tell us like some legends from Dominican Republic, and next time, then maybe we can know more about them. But that's very cool. Yeah, I think there is one guy. He's called I am. Um, oh my god, I forgot how. To, I think da- David David Ortiz. I think could be. So Lucito, if you, if you're watching us, please say it if it's. If it's right or wrong, but I think it's David Ortiz. It's a very, very famous Dominican player, and uh, well, yeah, there's a, lot, a few ones as well. And um, the the guy who who asked us about the the most followed teams in the basketball, the Rono, 
he just said here, like, I agree with your opinions about the most followed basketball team. So he probably thinks it's the same. And, she, and, he okay. put, and he put it, what do you think about the, the major league soccer? Uh, but soccer, we, <coughs> we, we, had, we are going to talk about soccer later. I thought if uh, I read something related to the MLB, I thought it would be the major league baseball. But anyway, since we already asked that, do you know any team in, in the soccer world in the U.S. that is following? I think there's one in Los, An Los Angeles. Yeah. Well. Los Angeles, there's one that is David Beckham played, I think. In a, a... Yeah, I think LA has two teams actually now. I, I think there are some very big teams, but the, the LA is very big, right? Galaxy, I think they're called. Um, yeah, DC uh, United, I think it's very big. Atlanta has a very strong team. And a, a crazy um, fan base. So, yeah, there's quite a few. I think New York now has a New York City team. Had some big players, too. I think David Villa went to play there. Mm -hmm. So I don't watch it too much. But I know that it's growing like crazy. It's getting way more popular. And I've seen some games that I was shocked, man. Like packed stadiums, flags, drums. Mm -hmm. You know, it looked like a Latin American game. It looked like Libertadores or it looked like... Um, a big, you know, Champions League game, like completely packed stadium, crazy atmosphere. Wow. And I was very surprised because I knew it was increasing, but I didn't know it was that big. Mm -hmm. So that's very cool. That's interesting. That's interesting. And I just saw that Luisito, he just asked us here and he put it, yes, David Ortiz, and he plays in the Red Sox. Red Sox is Boston, right? So Boston Red Sox. So interesting. That's nice. That's good to hear. And then, nice Red Sox, so classic team. What What do you think? If I had to to choose, for example, as I told you, I I, I lived in California, lived in San Francisco, so I tend to to cheer up for for the teams from there. So American football for me, it's the 49ers. and uh, and baseball it will be the San Francisco Giants, because especially when I was living there, they won. The, the World Series and it was a huge party like the city like it was it's imagine a city a big city like San Francisco completely stopped and with parties all over parades and the cars going all over I mean it was amazing so for me the San Francisco Giants it, it is my team no matter what so nice. what, what is your team if you have to choose From what sport? From Miami? No, um, yeah, from from baseball. I think the from, big three. Yeah, from baseball. Yeah, the big three from for you. What what would be? Yeah, so in my I, I agree with you. Like um, like in America, that's something interesting. With sports, there tends to be one big team per major city or even state, right? Like some states have a few very big teams. And then you have maybe like in New York, you have the Mets and the Yankees. But that's not that common. Like usually if you're born into a, a state or a city, chances are you're going to root for that team, right? Because um, mm -hmm. that's the team that you can go to games and, you know, you have your, your state pride and your city pride. Very different, like for example, in soccer, right? Like I'm from Rio de Janeiro in, in Brazil. And just in that city, there are four major teams in soccer. Mm -hmm. So it's like it, within one city, you have like a huge rivalry between four teams, which is kind of crazy. Yeah. If here was kind of like in the United States, then all of Rio would probably just root for one team. Same thing happens in Sao Paulo, four big teams and a lot of other smaller teams, uh -huh. which is kind of wild. So in like in Florida, in football, you have, you know, the Dolphins, Mm -hmm. And then you also have the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. So that's two teams within the whole state, yeah. right? But there are two different cities pretty far from each other. But I, I lived very close to Miami for most of the time. And then I, I went to school in Miami and I lived in Miami for quite a few years. So I would have to say the Miami Dolphins, the Miami Heat for the NBA, of course. Mm -hmm. um, I went to a couple of games. In Miami, it's very cool. They have this... Um, Critical mass is this movement. I think it's all over the world, but it happened in Miami as well. When it was usually like the last Friday of every month, people are people just go outside in, in 
thousands and ride their bicycle throughout the whole city. You know, it's like a very cool bicycle movement. Uh-huh. And um, there were a couple of times where Bosch and LeBron and Wade participated in critical mass. You know, they're just riding their bikes and everyone's like, oh, my God, try to follow them. Yeah, it's pretty wild. Wow. Um, so, you know, at the time that LeBron James was there and, and there was D Wade, of course, and Bosch, like that's when basketball was like peaking in Miami. So it was a lot of fun. And then the Marlins, the Marlins are the baseball team and they just built a, like a huge stadium near downtown. So those are the, the big three, I would say, in Florida, for sure in Miami. Oh, okay, okay. Well, that, that's interesting, yeah. I mean, for me, that I watch more, like, the, the American football, so I, everybody knows Miami Dolphins as well. And the Miami Heat yeah. well for the NBA because of the, the LeBron James. Like, so, yeah, there's a few interesting things about it. That's... For sure. And uh, for, for, for baseball, let, let's... when to go back to baseball so what else do what what kind of a position so tell me uh, tell us a little bit more about interesting i mean vocabulary during the, that so can you give us three sure. or like two or three positions or vocabulary words that you can say yeah so in baseball basically there are nine innings instead of having like two halves like you would have in in soccer or four quarters like you have you know in, in basketball and in football so there are like nine innings they call them and the teams take turns so it will be one team batting and one team pitching mm-hmm. and then they will switch after there are like three strikes usually like three outs right um, so then so that's the basic structure so the team who is pitching there is a player who stands in the pitch, it's what they call it, or the mount. So it's like this mount of dirt in the middle of a diamond. Mm-hmm. The baseball field is already something very... Perdona a todos, he hecho una pequeña, un pequeño problemita aquí. Ha sido yo que acabo de hacer clic sin querer. Pero ya vamos a volver a llamar al tutor, ¿vale? Ha sido culpa mía, yo os pido perdón. <risa> Acabo de hacer clic en algo que no debería. Pero bueno, ¿qué estás, qué estás, bueno, estás gustando? ¿Os gusta la clase? ¿Cómo, qué, ¿Cómo va todo? Espero que bien, si tenéis continuar con más dudas podéis poner aquí al lado en los comentarios y, y vamos a continuar hablando sobre esto y bueno espero que os guste Pero no os salgáis que estamos haciendo volvemos a conectar aquí con el tutor que yo he hecho un pequeño problemita yo mismo aquí de todos modos he visto que hay mucha gente que que ha puesto aquí, Luisito, muchas gracias por todos tus, tus comentarios y estar aquí con, con todos nosotros. Aquí está, bueno, nos ha ayudado bastante. And sorry, sorry, I just clicked. It was my fault. I just clicked to, to refresh the page. So, sorry. It's okay. I've done that a few times. <laughs> But, no problem. Anyway, so what, what you, you were saying? Sorry for that. No, it's all good. Um, yeah, so let me try to speed it up a little bit because I think we're kind of running out of time. But so the team, the, the baseball field, they call it the diamond because it's like a diamond shape where they have the bases, right? You have um, the home base, which is where the guy is batting. They have a catcher behind him to catch the ball from the pitcher. The pitcher is the player who is pitching the ball. He's tossing the ball towards the batter. So the better has a chance to hit it. But he's trying to make the better miss, really, right? Mm-hmm. You know, he's throwing it to the catcher. So the pitch, the pitch is when you toss something for another person to get it or to hit it, right? So they call it so that's different than in basketball or in soccer where they call it a shot, right? Mm-hmm. They call it in baseball a pitch. Oh, okay. 
And the pitch is the name of the mount as well, where the pitcher stands, which is in the middle of the diamond. And it's also the name of the, the throw, where he throws the ball. And then you have the batter. And he's called the batter because he's holding a baseball bat, and he's trying to bat the ball. He's trying to hit the ball, hopefully out of the park, so you know he scores points automatically, or far enough so that he has time to run to the next base, right? Mm -hmm. And you have first base, second base, third base. And uh, so basically the team who's attacking... Right, the team who who is on playing for points, it's usually just the batter, and if he makes to another base, they're calling they call it loading the bases. So you're occupying the bases with your players, right? Mm -hmm. And each time that a player can complete going through all the bases back to the home base, that's how you score a point. Mm -hmm. okay. So a home run is when the batter hits it out of the park. Right, so the catchers on the outfield they have no chance of catching the ball. To catch the ball, what does that mean to catch? Um, to catch is basically to to stop an object that is in movement, right? By getting a hold of it. So mm -hmm. to catch the baseball, that means the baseball is flying through the air, and you're stopping it from flying, and you're keeping it in your possession. So if a batter hits the ball, and the catcher can get the ball before it hits the ground, then that batter is out. He doesn't get to score any points. He doesn't get to load the base, right? Mm -hmm. So the batter is either trying to hit it out of the park or he's trying to hit it really far but make it bounce or drop before a catcher catches it in midair, right? Uh -huh. And the, the dream of the batting team is to load all the three bases with batters and then the following up batter can get a home run he can knock it out of the park because then all of those players will make it back to home base and they all score a point uh -huh. so that's like you know the, the top play in baseball right uh, okay, okay. so that's the pitch that's the catcher and the catch um some other terms is on deck on deck is what they call the batter who is the next up Right? So you have the batter who's batting up. He's mm -hmm. the, the guy who's his turn to try to hit the ball. Okay. And the very next batter after him, they say that he's on deck. He's on deck waiting for his turn. Mm -hmm. And the batter after him is in the hole. So that's where it starts with all these funny terms. You know? <laughs> and that's where like my investigation became very interesting. And I think it would take be a long time to try to explain them uh -huh. but i would suggest for anyone who's interested in baseball or is starting to become interested there are so many different terms um there are some websites where you can find the history behind these terms and they're super interesting because baseball dates like hundreds of years ago mm -hmm. so there's like so many different terms that have come from different places and just funny stories behind them uh -huh. and yeah. these two terms came from like the Navy, they came from ships to be on deck or to be in the hold. Whoa. So, yeah, it's, it's just awesome. So, I'm wow, like that, super into baseball now. So that, that would be something interesting. If you go, it, it's a very good way to practice English. So you guys go through these websites and, and research about the history of baseball. So it's definitely something very, very interesting to do if you wanted to, to improve your English because we will be learning and specific topic specific and um, words and it will be very rich in terms of content so it, I think for it, sure i think it will be it's a very nice thing for us for you all to do so research about the history of the sports it's an interesting exercise yeah you take notes and if you have any questions you bring it back to your cambly tutor and you can go over things that you didn't understand Maybe your tutor will be a sports fan and can give you some great insight. Mm -hmm. And even if he's not, he'll still be able to explain some words that maybe you didn't understand or he will try to give you some context so you can understand better what you did on your research. So this is good for sports or for science, anything you're interested in. It's always great to do some research, yeah. take down notes, write down questions, bring it back to your classes on Cambly because it helps your tutor to have material 
to help you develop your English further. So it's a great exercise, as Tiago said. Definitely is, definitely is. And if you wanted to have a class with Guy, don't forget that his link is down here in the description. You just have to click it and send him a message and schedule a class with him. And uh, so that's we already talked a little bit about baseball. I mean, it's a, an amazing sport. But let, let's go to our like the last um, sport that we're going through. It's one of the most, like I think, the most watched sports. And there's the the thing that is very, very interesting. And um, let's talk a little bit about what is American football. So can you give us just a, a, a small introduction so you, we can finish this class with a little, a little idea about what is the American football and, and some of the things? Yeah, so American football is a, another great sport because it has a lot of strategy. It's, again, one team is um, usually on offense and another team is on defense. So the teams, they have offense team, they have the defense team, they have special teams. There's hundreds of plays, so it's very dynamic. A lot of different players playing different positions. So it's another game that it really takes an investigation to really understand all the specifics. You could just turn on the game and watch the plays, and it's a lot of action. So you don't need to be an expert just to enjoy it. But the more you get into it, and the more you understand about positions and what um, what specific responsibilities those players have, it's a rabbit hole. You know, a rabbit hole. It's a sorry. It's like an idiom to explain that it's something you can really dig deep into. There's like a lot to discover. You know. Um, yeah. So it, yeah, it's great. It's very dynamic game. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, some terms that are very well used, you know, you have like um, the throw or a pass. So it's the quarterback who is the guy who is usually in control of making the plays on the team that has possession. Mm -hmm. um, usually there's a snap or they call it a hike as well is when the player, the center player starts the play giving the ball to the quarterback. And then the quarterback is usually the guy who is making the passes. Uh -huh. So he has all these options on his team, all those receiver players, and he's looking to see who is in better position, who is open. And then again, they have all these different plays that they maybe can plan ahead of time. So they already kind of know what plays they're going to run to try to confuse the defending team. It's just very complex. Mm -hmm. And the quarterback is the guy who's usually trying to make the pass. Right. And the pass could either be complete, so that means that his teammate will catch the ball in the air and try to follow play, or maybe he will be tackled, but you know, he, it's a complete pass. An incomplete pass is if the player fails to catch the ball and he goes out of play. Mm -hmm. Or it could be intercepted, which is when the defending team catches the ball in the air instead of the attacking team. And an interception is like one of the most like entertaining moments of the game because one team is attacking and it's trying to make progress and all of the sudden the other team is on offense, you know, and he intercepts a pass and now he's making a run for it. And it, it just changes the, the dynamic of the game completely. You know, it just shifts the game. So it's very cool. Yeah, yeah, definitely. And uh, let's, let's go to, I mean, we already have, very close to one hour, so maybe we can do one last question here, and then maybe we can continue with sure. talking about sports in another life, since it's a very interesting topic, and I mean, we have a lot of things to discuss. And I saw one interesting awesome. question here from Pere. So Pere is here with us since the beginning, so thank you, Pere, to your questions and being here. And he has something very interesting, in it. and uh, it's he put it in the NFL. The NFC is the first division, and the AFC is the second division. And uh, actually, it's not. It's two different conferences. But do do you have like a, what? Do you have something to to say about it? Yeah, I think that you it used to be the the NFL and the AFL, which then merged in the sixties, and it became one solidified league. Yeah, right. Which is when they came up with the name Super Bowl. Awesome. Mm -hmm. And the story behind that was kind of funny 
but long story short, they just picked a catchy name to have like a name for the trophy, so it just wouldn't be called a championship. Uh-huh. You know, so they came up with Super Bowl, and they named it after Super Ball, which was like a, a children's toy game, and they just thought it was a very catchy name. So that's when the Super Bowl was invented, when the AFL and the NFL were combined to have one champion between them. You know, in baseball they call it the World Series, in basketball they call it just the championships. Uh-huh. Lackluster, but <laughs> yeah. So in football they call it the the Super Bowl. Oh, yeah. So the Super Bowl is the the when the two winners of these two like, conferences, and for example, for as I told you guys, I, I always cheered up for for San Francisco. And San Francisco is from the NFC, so uh, conference. So um, it's something that I'm always trying to. Last Super Bowl it was the San Francisco 49ers uh, against the Kansas City Chiefs. So the two winners from these two conferences playing together and um that that's the thing so right that's, that's not the first division and second division so it's a, it's an interesting thing so i mean i think we can we already talk a little bit about all those sports maybe we can talk a little bit more about um in another life since it's a very interesting topic and we have a lot of things to discuss so it will be nice to have you sure. here one more time and um I mean, do, do you want to close that with saying anything for, for, for us here? Yeah, it's a great topic. I think um, there's so much to dive into, especially since we're covering many different sports. Um, and there are so many side stories. I get sometimes a little sidetracked, but it's great. And um, it's one of those you know topics that, It's very embedded in culture, you know, sports in general. So for people who are trying to improve their vocabulary, people who are trying to watch more sports and entertainment, people who are thinking about visiting America, you know, and you're most probably going to be attending games or you're going to attend a bar or an event where they will be playing games. And it's a very, you know, usual topic of discussion you know people are always having conversations about sports so i think it's very useful as well so yeah people watching at home thank you and let us know in the comments if you would like to hear more terms um idioms and other phrases that we have incorporated into daily life that have come from sports if that's something interesting as well let us know if we should do another one and from me it would be great yeah it would be my pleasure so that's nice. So guys, everybody, says that, let's make sure to put the comments here and the comments on the video as well if you have any ideas about what you wanted to hear from us in terms of sports or, I mean, any topic. So give us your feedback and it will be amazing and, and very nice to, to create this content for you. So thank you very much, all sure. of you. Muchísimas gracias a todos los que están aquí. And we see you. We see you next next week. So thank you, Guy, and see you. Thank you, Thiago. Thank you, everyone at home. Have a great night.